Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It is episode eight, and um, I can't I just, still your sip. I just can't get over um, the fact that it's episode eight already. That's that's just incredible. That is absolutely insane, isn't it? Episode, it is, it is, mate. It's episode eight, and we've um, we've had some wonderful conversations and discussions on the mm. show already, um, and some absolute fantastic big names of the of the Croatian community in terms of the Australian Croatian community, um, and it, it, it continues on further tonight. Yeah, it does, mate. Um, look, it's an absolute pleasure to uh, to introduce our next two guests, guys that we know really well, and and um, players we've seen develop down at North Geelong from from their junior days, their younger days, to where they are now. Um, and these two young guns are, are the future. Um, they, they're they're at the moment in Croatia, um, taking their first steps to to you know what they hope, what we hope is going to be their um, the professional career. And it's an absolute pleasure to welcome um, the dynamic duo, let's call them that, from uh, yeah. former North North Geelong Warriors, Lukas Gorko and Niki Volarovic, Nicholas Volarovic. Gentlemen, um, how are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having us. Doing very good, guys. Thanks for having us on. We should have uh, a sign up, Tonchi, that says, coming to your live from Potstrana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, for those of you who don't know, that's basically a suburb of Split where these two gentlemen are. Uh, Luca, firstly, over to you. Um, you've, um, well, well, you know, you've, you've signed with um, second division side NK Dugopolje. Um, tell us your first um, impressions of, of Dugopolje. For those of us that probably haven't been there, not, not know, all we know is it's an unbelievable second division stadium that they've got there. I was just about to say the stadium is uh, unbelievable. It's, I think it's the second biggest one in this area here. In Potsana, it's absolutely amazing. That was the first thing that really grabbed my eye. And the club itself? The club itself, oh, the coaches are awesome. The boys are pretty, pretty welcoming. I'm training with the second team right now, so mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. finding my, finding my feet. Good stuff. And Nikki, uh, you've uh, you've signed with Primorac Stobrec, which is on the outskirts of Split, um, sort of going down south. Uh, um, so you're kind of kind of caught in the middle. middle. Uh, yeah. Your your yeah. your mum's from the Zadar hinterland. Your da your dad's from the Metkovic um, yeah. area, and Split sort of seems to be halfway in between. In between. Yeah. 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 So, what's your first impressions of Split, the city, and uh, oh, your, your new club, Primorac? Amazing, amazing. Um, just beautiful area. The club's perfect for me at the moment. Since day one, everyone's welcomed me. Um, training every day is intense, and um, I'm just loving it so far. Excellent. Just nice area to be around. You're looking fit, boys? Yes, thank you. Training every day is non-stop. <laughs> always, always doing something. Is it pretty so, brutal? Oh, it is at the start, but you get used to it, I guess. Uh, it comes down to your priorities. It's what we want to be doing, so... Ah, yep. we love yeah, it. exactly. Yeah, spot on, man. Hey, boys, uh, I'll go, go over to you, Nikki. We, we're a yep. long way from Geelong, mate, in, uh, in Port yeah. Um Yes. Tell us a little bit what, is, what does North Geelong mean to you? How, how do you uh, feel about North Geelong when you think about uh, what, where you've been so far in terms oh, of your career? North Geelong for me is everything. I've been there since day one. My only club I've been to, basically, besides now Croatia. So, when I think football in Australia, I think just North Geelong Warriors. And that's the one club I've always played at. So, to me, that's everything. So now, obviously, I'm in Croatia now, giving it uh, another go, different... Uh, I guess, opportunity for me just to see how it's like overseas. Yep. When I think about North Geelong, it's everything, everything to me. It's a great club. Good, mate. And um, you and Luca came through the junior ranks together. Together, um, yeah. Spent a lot of time together, not just as teammates, but as mates off the pitch as well. Yes, yeah. Um, just a, a little bit about the influences and, and the, the major people that have played a part in your life in terms of football, mate. Uh, well, I, I guess growing up, being around family and friends, just always watching football, always playing it, doing something with the ball. Um, I know when I was around six, seven years old, we met score calls, but we also came back to Australia with the family, and that's when I met Luca. And since then, we just clicked like good mates, and then always playing football together. I guess Yossi's, Yossi's uh, played a big impact in me. And the play I am today always motivating me to, to do better. Um, obviously, now Stuart Beggs in the past few years has pushed me a lot. Also, he's a great impact on me. Um, 
on who I am today and where I am with my footballing career. Fantastic. Um, now, um, Nikki, uh, look, yeah. one of the things that we, we, we I can't wait to hear about and, 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 and listen to your, is your experiences, but also your words of advice. Like, um, you know, growing up in Geelong, um, you've played at, at, at an NPL club like North Geelong all your all your life. And I know when I was when I was sort of 16, 17, 18, there were players there that were really, really good that once they get to 19, 20, they kind of either burn out or they discover the bo- you know, the girls, the yeah. booze, the party yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? Um, very few actually make it to the top. Um, you know, you and Luca are, are two of those that have, you know, decided to pursue your dreams in, in Europe and um kudos to you guys. But what are some of the sacrifices that, that you guys have had to make on your case? What, what are some of the sacrifices you've I had think, to make to be able to I get think, to where um, you are? Well, first of all, there's a lot of sacrifices you have to make. Um, just small small ones like not going to parties or, you know, resting on a Friday night, not before a game. Um, obviously, eating healthy, drinking healthy, but... You can't you can't go out every weekend partying and stuff because you've got to make these small sacrifices. You know you have training during the week, you've got to get a big game on the weekend. Also, sacrifice for example now going overseas, moving to a different country without family. It's, just, it's hard sometimes, but at the end of the day, um, I'm here to play football, and that's obviously a part of it. Making a lot of sacrifices. So I'd say that I'd say that's the biggest sacrifice by far. Obviously, putting behind everything that we know, going to a new country with a different culture. Everything's so different, you know, just putting everything behind and just challenging yourself to see how far you can go. Um, yeah. Luca, you mentioned that, mentioning going to a new country, it's a different culture. Um, I guess one of the big differences between Croatians and Australian Croatians is probably their mentality as well. Um, and in, in Croatia, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a real tough kind of environment. Um, have you had any, like, um, uh, 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 what's the word? Um, uh, confrontations, I guess, with that change of mentality, and how have you adapted to it as opposed to, say, our Australian Croatian way of thinking? I think it comes down to the passion here, as it's soccer is the main sport here. So everyone's so passionate for the sport. So all the coaches, the, the coach I have now, he's very strict. He wants everything to be in order and just shows how much he cares about every tackle, every game, every result. So it's so it's. It's not that pa- the coaches there don't have passion, but he has mm-hmm. just another level, different world. Would you say it's a kind of a dog-eat-dog world because there are so many people trying to succeed and it's like the absolute be-all and end-all. It's not just a, you know, a kick in the park. It's the difference between some people making a living or, or, or putting food on the table for their family. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a dog-eat-dog world. you got to care about yourself, look after yourself and make sure that you're doing everything you can to be the best. You can be. How, how did you find that, Nikki? Um, that that type of um, you know oh, rather think, kind of a harsh yeah. sort of uh, reality check. I think it's the same. Well, Luke was saying, but I guess just again small sacrifices. If um, you know people are training every day, and then just having one one day a break is, isn't good enough. Here, yeah. um, there's people training twice a day, three times a day, every single day. It's just, just I guess the more you train, the more chances you have of making it. Now, uh, boys, you, uh, your senior debuts at North Geelong were a, a little bit, I think, about a year apart. Um, yeah. Luca, you, you made your first appearance under James Coots. James yes. says hello. Yeah. James says hello. I, I see him every now and again up here on the Gold Coast. Um, now, if you can take your, take your time back to have a look at that in your mind, about that debut, what was that feeling like to get on the pitch? Um, this is your your father's home and your uncle's home club and your family's home club, really. Yeah, yeah. It was a dream. It was a dream come true. I remember it was a away game against Moreland City and Kuti um sent me aside before the game. He told me I was starting. I was just buzzing, couldn't wait to to get on and uh, yeah. show show what I got. But yeah, I think we ended up and losing three nil actually. But it was a you big. Look, look, uh, it's something I'll always remember. Is just it's not something you forget. Your first senior minutes full yeah. game as well so i was very yeah, grateful look, to Kuti. look back on that now that uh for that opportunity for you to um take take on and learn from um it's been well uh, advertised probably in a couple of different articles between you guys arriving in croatia and today where it's been said that if you ever wanted to go and have from this is from your father if you ever wanted to go and um overseas to make a go of it 
you'd have to st- you'd have to stand out in senior football at North Geelong first of all. Well, you did that, mate. You got best and fairest in the last season. Um, so, if you think back to that three and nil, don't be a dude this hard, mate, because everyone is, everyone's got a starting point somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You got to start somewhere. The last year having such a great year. Um, what, what did you attest that to? Was it physical preparation, team organisation? Oh, we, we us, us boys, we had a very very good connection between each other. We knew we knew, we knew how we played with each other. We knew how all the boys like I had a good connection with the forward three, so I knew where to find them and the coaches too, Begsy and Adrian. They were just so good to us. Uh, the trainings were so organised, and we just did everything we could to play as well as we could on the weekends. Excellent. I'll, I'll just extend that a little bit, Tonch, with Nikki. Nikki, you, you burst on the scene last year, and there's yeah. one absolute memorable game. I think I think I lost my yeah. voice from yelling uh, that Werribee game, mate. It was yeah. uh, outstanding to uh, see you on the park and score that goal. Um, yeah. But you, you made a habit of it. You you popped up with a few yeah, more crucial yeah. goals. That, that, uh, uh, take us through the emotional roller coaster. Oh, well, first off, Stewie um, told me a week before, he said, um, you're not playing 21s uh, next week. You'll be playing seniors only. So for me, that was already amazing, just knowing that I'm a part of the senior squad only. Um, and then obviously we went to the game, away to Werribee, played I think the last 25, 30 minutes, and then... Um, we had a corner and then edge of the box scored a nice volley and I don't know, it was just amazing. I, I couldn't believe it. It was like a dream come true scoring my first senior goal in that way also. It was just worst can't describe the feeling. I think I think your celebration showed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and having, well, having all the boys all the boys around me, all my close friends, just so so special, makes it ten times yeah. better. Yeah, it is a tight unit there at North Geelong. Yeah. There's no doubt about that, mate. Well, it, it, both both those experiences will stand there for you to, for you guys to build on. And now you're now you're yeah. in Croatia. Um, for for both of you, was Croatia always going to be the first destination? You give this a crack. Uh, I'll go look up. For me, I'd say yes. I'd say a bit. It was my first destination, really, just because I got family here, so it'd be the easiest to adjust to the lifestyle. I think just for me personally, I think last year in the 21s, I was scoring a few goals and then eventually towards the end of the season, I was playing with seniors for a few games, scored a few goals and I was like, so my parents discussing why not go overseas, give it a crack and Croatia was a destination. So it's something different for me, I guess. Now, um, um, I guess, uh, Nikki, um this is a team sheet from Primorac of the 26th of February. So um, you're named of the bench on the senior team there. Um, yeah. Did you end up coming on? Did you end up coming on? And uh, So I've, I've played two games so far. So I came on for, for the last 15, 20 minutes of my first game. We ended up yep. losing 1-0. And then that was just a practice game, though. And then I played last week. We lost away um, uh, in a league, league game. So... Yep. And and how is Primorac doing at the moment? So it's uh it's is it the fourth tier? How do, how does yeah, it, how does it structure here? Yeah? And it's the split league. split scar Dalmatinska Jupani. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's two leagues that are like full Croatia, like you yeah. travel the whole country, and then I think the third league goes like regional. So regional, yeah. And, and, and it's obviously now. changing next year of uh, with the, all of yes. that. How would yeah. you rate? How would you, Nikki? First of all, with you, how would you rate the standard of 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 the football at Primora Stobrec and some of the opponents he played, um, particularly senior level, comparing it yeah. to say NPL two with North. Yeah. Well, I think I think here I think everyone's good here, no matter what you know, because they've obviously been playing their whole life street soccer or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. Um, obviously, training every single day makes a um, big impact on the team and the quality that we have. So I think from from here, pretty much the NPL level, it's it's. A bit different, I would say, in terms of quality. Um, I think here we just train every single day, so it does help quite a lot. So you'd say that that the um, uh, standard there is, yeah. is higher than the NPL? Yeah, I would say, yeah, say so, yes. Yeah, in- interesting. And uh, Luca, what about yourself? What have you been your experiences so far with Dugopolia, yeah, the second team? Um, you said you were training with them. Have you played any games? Have you managed to get a uh, breakthrough? 
Yeah, we went to Istra. We had a game in Istra on Sunday, so How'd you I go? played the last 20 minutes. We lost 3-1, but we had a red card, so it was, it was a tough, tough game. Yeah. The red card in like the 40th minute, so... Yeah, and how would you... you, you... Go on, sorry. I was going to say, how would you compare the standard of football there um, that you're playing at Dugo Polje with, with what you've experienced um, in Australia? I would say the intensity is like an MPL 1 and MPL 2. Just the technique is so much better here. Everyone plays but one touch. Uh, they don't really hang on to the ball much. Just the technique is just so good. Now, um, you didn't answer my question from the other day, Luca. You you posted that image of, uh, in Istra, but you didn't tell me it was on special at Plodine. <laughs> Uh, that was just my bus stop there. To the... nah, I'm, I'm joking. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a, a bit of an inside joke. I saw a photo he put up. Yeah, it was around yeah. about where the bus stop was and applauding is in the background. I thought, oh, what's on special, Luca? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, speak, speaking of, you know, what's what's over there and what's on special, how are you guys finding just the lifestyle? How are you acclimatizing to the lifestyle, the language as well? Um, are you finding it, you know, a bit of a culture shock at first? Just just general life in general, or you you are mixing pretty well because you are both, I suppose, Dalmatinsi. So the the temperament, the culture does make it a little bit easier to kind of fathom. Uh, Nicholas, over to you first. Yeah. Um, have you been down to Mexico Beach where your parents are yeah, from? Yeah, I, I was there for the first week. So mum, in there dad, for about sorry. Um, I was there for a week and then came came back to split to reunite with Scorecorn and us to have been living here in an apartment together. Um, but I guess the lifestyle here is so much different in a good way. Everyone, or for Luca and I, we both train in the morning. Then during the day, we'll go out, explore a few things, or either do another training session and then club training at night. Mm -hmm. So we're always doing something. But the lifestyle here is just amazing. Just going out for a coffee or whatever it may be, it's just, it's just different in a good way. Yeah, yeah. Life is pretty normal. COVID restrictions slowly coming yeah, down. Yeah, I don't think um, I've heard. They don't really mind, yeah. COVID. <laughs> I forgot about COVID, to be honest. That's yeah, no makes... masks. It's all pretty no. easy. Like, lucky daisy. Yeah. That's Luca, great. for you, it's a little bit easier, I guess. Um, you, you've got your grandmother, you've got your mum there at the moment. Um, and his, you know, his you uncle's the... upstairs as well. Yeah, yeah the, he's upstairs the, as well. The, the family's there. Has that made that transition that little bit easier for you personally? That's ma It's made it a lot easier, especially for the first week that, like, my uh, my auntie would cook for us, for me and Nikki, and there's just one less worry you have to worry about, and they made they made it so much easier to settle in, especially like we're not alone. Then me and Nikki had someone to turn to, and yeah. it just made it a lot easier. I was going to ask about that. That does the loneliness kick in? I mean, you've got each other to lean on, which is great because you're childhood yeah. friends. But yeah, you know, there, there, there would there would be that separation anxiety to some degree because you know a large chunk of your life is on Aussie shores, right? Yeah, yeah um, exactly. What, so what we. What would you try to share with the with other aspiring young athletes looking for this sort of similar situation? Yeah, we usually train early morning, and then I train really late at night at eight pm with the team, and then Nikki trains at four. So there is a bit of waiting around. So we we're lucky we have each other. We can go out for coffee, find something to do. So yeah. it helps helps a lot. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to um, share something with the young Aussie Croats looking for a similar situation to what you've put yourself into, um, give, a, give us a little bit of advice about how someone would go about it. it would be directly to, uh, to clubs? Do you need to go through a contact of some sort of an agency? I think, I think the main thing is always just doing something. You can always, you can never train it enough. You know, always kick the ball around, go for a run or do whatever you can because you don't want to have any regrets when you're older and, you know, tell yourself, oh, I could have done this, could have done that. So while you're still young, make the most of it before it's too late, I guess. Yeah, you got to be prepared to put your head down and work as hard as you can when you come in this environment. You often hear coaches say you got to do those little bit extra. Always do 10% yeah. of everything extra and, and that'll always benefit. Is that something you guys would, would definitely agree with? For sure, 100%. Yeah. Beautiful. Gents, um, thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. We're going to have to wind it up. Um, uh, the, the blokes from uh, Newcastle, Croatia, Sean, uh, knew how to talk and they, they, they spoke for a long time, so we've gone a l little bit over time. Nonetheless, um, we hope to have you guys back on the show. And just very, very quickly, any messages um, for your family, friends back, um, back in, in Geelong? Um, first of all, Nicholas, over to you. What would you like to say to your family and friends oh. uh, in Geelong? 
and Canberra. Oh, I don't know. Just, I guess I'm waiting for them to come visit me one day, hopefully. That's it. Sooner Good. rather than later. Luca, I'll, I'll you... see you soon, I guess. Yeah, much of the same for me. Just hi to all my friends and family. I'm, I miss them a lot and hopefully I'll see them soon. Good stuff. Uh, you guys, make sure you say hi to Baka Anja, Luca, your mum, uncle and auntie, Gubby and uh, uh, I forgot his, his sister's name. Yeah, do. yeah, but please send my regards. Awesome. Good on you guys and thank you very much for having us on tonight's show, Ozpro Soccer Show.